Okay, so um, just to talk about energy losses a bit. This is a fairly typical diagram that you might get in an exam showing uh, our producers here. So these are on trophic level one. Let's do some labelling then. Then we've got our uh, primary consumers. secondary and tertiary consumers. And so along here we've got a food chain showing where the energy is going and at each level we've got something going off as heat. So this is going to represent, well in that colour it's not, <laughs> ah there we go. Uh, so this is going to res represent uh, respiration losses. And I've deliberately left this one blank because the other, the other thing that can happen is that those organisms don't get passed along the food chain and they just live their lives out and they lose some energy as re in respiration and then they die and trundle off to the uh, decomposer chain. So in addition to sort of calculations like you know what percentage of energy would be lost by respiration by the primary consumers where you'd take the little number 1890 divide by the bigger number 3120 and multiply by 100. Should we do that? Um, so 1890 divided by 3120 multiplied by 100. So they're using 60% of their is that right? Yeah, it is, yeah. So <coughs> they're using 60% of their energy in respiration. If we look at this lot, 320 divided by 360 times 100, they're losing nearly 90%. And then 21, no, 15 divided by 21 times by 100, they're losing about 70%. So these are all organisms that are losing a really high percentage of their uh, taken in energy and respiration. All the rest of it is going off to these decomposer chains and of course the decomposers are again they utilizing the dead organism to fuel their own respiration and therefore they have a respiratory loss as well and you might be given a total down here of the energy that's gone the other way or you might have to work it out. Um, so um, they could ask you, I know how many lengths, you know, how many steps there are in the food chain. By far, the most common thing is to ask you about this level up here and say why isn't there another level? And if you're using information from the data, um, you know, this energy here is there's just simply not enough to s left in the food chain to sustain another level because of all these respiration losses. So let's just have a quick uh, think about other ways of presenting the data and the main way in which ecological data is, uh, is presented is in the form of pyramids. So in its simplest form you can count by the methods in the ecology collecting data thing, you know, using a quadrat random sampling, you can count your number of organisms at levels one, two, and three. And if you've got lots of small producers, it'll be that shape. And if you've got, you know, a big tree, it'll be that shape. And if you've got a parasite, you know, sort of the one that you've done at GCSE, grass and rabbit, fox, grass, rabbit fleas. If you've got parasites that'll cause a bulge there. So those are pyramids of number dead easy to collect your data for, get your quadra out um, and count stuff. The, the sort of next level and this sorts out this is to do a pyramid of biomass where you would sort out your organisms into their various trophic levels and then you would dry and weigh them bit harsh and a bit destructive 
Uh, you could probably do a wet mass and do some calculated adjustment from previous data. And that tends to make these odd pyramids a more pyramid shape. So that's kind of handier. Again, in populations where you've got a really rapid turnover, like algae through to zooplankton, you still get some of these little inversions going on. And so the way to sort that out is to actually, you know, do a pyramid of energy. Now, pyramids of energy cannot be anything except a pyramid because at each level you've got respir respiration losses. So it's always that sort of step shape. And the advantage of doing this is you can put the solar energy at the bottom uh, quite often to deal with the decomposers. You might see a bar at the side, with, of course they feed on all levels, or perhaps it'll be a little bar across the top. And the area uh, represents a unit of energy. And the same area represents the same unit of energy at each one of these levels. So that's kind of ecological pyramids dealt with as well. And of course you might get data that sort of does this and has some numbers on it and asks you to, to calculate. So um, I'm just looking at one now that says, you know, we've got 2,000 units in the producers and we've only got 1.6 in the consumers. Where is that energy gone? How much of it has gone? What percentage is transported? You know, does that represent 0.6 divided by 2,000 multiplied by 100? That means of the energy coming into the producers, only 0.03% of it is transmitted up to this level on the uh, on the energy pyramid. Where's the rest gone? All gone to respiration. Respiration, dead, 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 can't even begin to tell you how important it is. Okay.